Hey everybody, welcome back to The Dice Tower. My name is Z Garcia. And I'm Chris Yee. Today we're taking a look at Footprints. This is a game from Chili Fox Games in which uh, the setting is prehistory and we are going to be traversing the lands, building up our... Uh, going into caves and, and drawing out some cave paintings, building a little bit of civilization as we traverse, gathering resources and spending them smartly for the sweet, sweet victory of victory points. Mm. And cave. What a caveman needs. Mm. What a caveman needs. What a caveman wants. He wants them victory points. Oh, yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I loved it. That's my jam. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the overview. Uh, and Chris is going to sing to me a little more while you watch that. What a caveman wants, what a caveman needs. The objective of the game is to get the most victory points, which are represented by the footprints. And the game is going to end either when someone makes it all the way over here to the cairns, and we're going to finish out the round and score up, or a player is fully out of cards. You have these four that you begin with uh, randomly from the top of your deck, and then the rest of your deck is simply set aside. You also shuffle your leader card among the top seven, so you'll get that pretty quickly. Like, this character has it already over here, this special card that is a unique power to this player, to this board. It shows you down here on the board the makeup of your deck, and then the setup has already been done. The first thing we're going to do, actually, uh, and this is going to be a game for three players, though I'm only showing you uh, the sections and the play area for two. One player and another player over here. We are going to select some starting bonuses and locations over here. So let's say our start player is right here, and they have this uh, to denote that. Then in reverse player order, we are going to pick one of these starting locations and take the corresponding bonuses. So this player might go here, and then this player with their token, they might go, uh, let's say, here, and then they'll take the things it, it shows there. So they're moving some of these pillars up. They're going to be moving this one up, they'll be moving this one, and they're going to be moving this one. Anything they uh, reach, they're going to take that. And there's a few different things that I'll talk about. Also, if you make it high up enough on these tracks, you'll earn three points for the ninth place or seven victory points for the tenth and last place, sort of the last upgrade there. Uh, so there you go. That's something else you can achieve and get victory points from that. Uh, the way the general game flow goes, and I, I need to pick my starting location as well, so I think I'll go... Um, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to pick a fire card as it denotes right there and then that symbol means move one up on any color so I'm gonna move this one like that and then I get a fire card I'll come back to those in one second also every player has one of these starting footprint cards which are end game scoring or actually it's in game scoring but it's sort of something you're attempting to achieve if I ever achieve these things I can flip this face down and it'll be worth some points to me. If I never do it, I take a penalty. They're always plus six, negative three if you don't do it. All right. Uh, so on your turn, you are going to follow this breakdown. And every player has a player aid here with your breakdown and on the back what the scoring looks like, which we'll take a look in a second. So my turn goes like this. I play one of these clan cards. I'm going to select whichever one I want and I am going to play that card somewhere. I'm just going to put it right here for now. Secondly, here we go, uh, I'm going to, if I want to, I can also play a fire card. So I always have to play one of these. I may play a fire card, and it gives me some sort of bonus. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Secondly, I execute my cards, whatever I play. So I have two options. I can do the stuff across the top here, or I can do the stuff across the bottom. All right. Now the top is movement. It says in this case that I move across the icy area equal to how high up this pillar is, is what that symbol means. So there's a little number below it. It began on two. Now it says three because I moved it once. So I'll be able to move three times on that. So I could do say one, two, three, like so. Okay. The second option instead is moving up these two pillars and then moving one space. All right. Uh, this secondary space also has a, uh, an ability, which is if anybody's in my way, I could leapfrog them. Okay. 
And again, this is right here. That symbol there also denotes that jumping over effect. But obviously, nobody's going to be in front of me, so I shouldn't have to worry about that. So there we go, I'll do the top one. I get to move three times. One, two, three. And then any uh, anything I passed through or ended up on, I'm going to get that. In this case, there's a mammoth symbol there. So I'm going to get this resource. There are four resources in the game. There is the stone, the wood, the mammoths, and then the fruits, the berries. And they have their own, uh, there you go, there's one right now that, that just flew by. They have their own tokens right here as you can see and those right there all right i'm going to put that by my board right here the, the location that most likely will use it and i am done with that step next up comes the build step which is optional i may build okay so let's say it's later in the game and i have another mammoth well now comes step three where i can build this right here says i can spend two mammoths and i can build this to build this has to be on a space adjacent to me of the corresponding type, i.e. snowy. So I could put it right there. After I build it, I am going to get as a bonus anything around it. So I would get this bonus mammoth right here, and it's also worth three victory points All right, at the end of the game. Next step then would be I can activate one of my engraving powers. These are the engravings, these four around the board, and any I've built now give me a permanent power that I can trigger once per game. If I've built multiples, I can only choose one or the other. I can pick only one of these every time I get to use my uh, special ability. And they're all the same. You can spend one of that type of thing, in this case one mammoth, and move up your pillar one time. If I had the mammoth, I could spend it. I could move this up, and hey, look at that. There's a stone symbol under there. So by doing that, I would then get a stone which I would keep by my board. So this is a lot of what you're doing, is triggering things, some cascading effects that might happen. Uh, having done that, I'm going to do step five, discard all my played cards, and then step six is simply drawing a new card for myself. And I am done. At any time during the game, I can, if I qualify for this, on my turn I can say, okay, well I have what I need, in this case two of these and two of these, and I'm going to flip that face down and I have it. So the symbols out here on the board are the four resources, the fire, which give you a fire card. You can add these on to something you're doing. Uh, this one gives you gives me the fruit and lets me move on one of anything. Uh, this one, I can spend one mammoth and move any two pillars. This lets me move three times on the stone there, on the mountainous regions. This one lets me go back on one specific track to go forward on the other three, and so on. Various effects like that. Pretty powerful stuff there. The footprints out here. Let me claim one of these footprint cards. Uh, and again, these work just like the other one. Hey, if I ever have a total between my gray pillar here and my, my uh, ice pillar that is 15 or more, meaning the locations, then I score this. Now, as soon as you take one of these, you can choose to say, no, I don't think I'm ever going to do that. And you discard it so that you don't take the penalty. And you make that choice every time you claim a new one of these. If you think you'll be able to do it, then you keep it. And as soon as you do it, you can flip it face down and you're going to get those six victory points. All right. The final thing I haven't talked about is the cave paintings. And they're over here. So there's a few caves near the back of the board. There's a few caves here. And if you are then, let me uh, see, I'm this one. If you are back here somewhere, then you can build that then during the build step, the same way you would one of these engravings. It's right here in the middle, the top, and it costs one of each, it tells me right there. So if I had one of each of these four resources, I could build this in a cave adjacent to me. I put that out there and it's going to give me some end game scoring. Uh, these are all going to be different, and so it might be two, in this case, times where your green pillar ended up. How many steps it has taken. It's You're going to get that as a victory point times two. Uh, and they might be various things. Ten points plus uh, one times the cairn you ended up on. So that's over here. If you made it, if I, if I made it all the way to the end and I was the second player to do so, that would be 14 points. Claiming this one would be 10 plus 1 times 14, which is 14, okay? It's very hard to get back here, I should point that out. So while this is a tremendously good tile, seemingly, it's also very hard to get all the way to the back of the board. 
So it might be a, a trap there. You might just end up getting the 10, which is not anything to scoff at either. So there you go. They're all different. They're all obviously in the rule book and explained. So that's the general flow. You're burning through this deck one time. Going through them, going through them, eventually when you're down to the last four cards here, you'll still use those four, and then that'll be your final turn there when you have one more. Uh, all the players are going to get equal turns, and then we score it up. Like I said, every player has a player aid, and on the back, it explains the scoring. So you're going to get the cairns if you made it down there, anything your engravings are worth, uh, your skills, if you made it all the way to the end, you get three or seven for that. The footprint cards, six for each completed, minus three for each non-completed. Cave paintings, if you manage to put it out, you're going to get points for that. Your resources that are left over, these that you never used, two of those become one victory point. And then if you have any fire cards that you never spent, they're so good, they're worth one victory point each. And that's it. The most points is the winner of the game. In this soul that a cave man needs. Yes, that's probably enough for them to have finished the overview by now, I think. Okay, anyway, welcome back, everybody. Um, so, Footprints, what do we think of this one? Well, I'll tell you one thing. The look of this game and the graphic design of the game and the feel of the game are all really old school. Like, there was something, when I first saw the game, brought it out, saw the components... Right there, that was enough for me to go, wow, this feels like a 2002 game. It really, I... You know, late 90s, early 2000s, Euro game. It looks, like you said, about 20 years old. Like, if you had convinced, if you had told me, like, want to play this game that, like, uh, Kramer and Kiesling came out in their mid-career, I'd be like, hey, that's, yeah, that's kind of what it looks like, you know? And... And it, and it feels like that, too, a little bit. It does. There's something about this. You know, Euro games in this day and age, they're just not not really... They're not very minimalistic, I guess is the best way to put it. They tend to have a lot of stuff. Because you need new things. And, you know, these games, they used to do everything that they were... They, they could achieve everything they needed with, like, three rules and two actions. They're kind of gone. They don't really do that anymore. This one manages to... Do a little bit of that. It feels old school. It doesn't just look that way, but it manages to do some interesting stuff with very few moving parts. It really is. When we when we speak of the graphic design and the illustration in this, that feels old school and not necessarily like a positive way. It's not a compliment. For <laughs> sure, yeah. The graphic design part is not. This is this is not a looker. It is it is not to the point where some of the stuff on the tiles is Printed side, you know, at, kind of at an angle when you put it on your player board. The, the iconography is fairly small. There's yeah. definitely some issues I have with it. But when we talk about gameplay, it is actually, for me, a positive. It's impressive that it feels like an old school game. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it your turn consists of playing a card. Kind of, yeah. If you have a fire card, you can play a second card, and that's your turn. Pretty much. A couple of things happen because of this, as a consequence of that, but that's kind of it. And you take, what, 14 turns in the game? The first time Chris and I played was pretty funny, actually, because those decks just flew by. And I'm, he, you were asking me, like, one time through this deck? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's the whole game. I, I don't understand either. We're like a third of the way up. Most of our cards are gone. We're not sure what's going on. Um... It's a game that is does not care about holding your hand, does not care about you, you know, having a catch up. It's just it's it's old school, man. There's something about it that the mentality of the game, the way it feels, it's like figure it out or die, you know. <laughs> it really <laughs> it fits the setting in that sense, right? I guess so. From the very beginning, it says choose one of the six starting places and get a small bonus. So I go, okay, cool. No recommendation, nothing. And if you pick wrong based on the four cards that you have drawn in front of you, you're just going to be behind the, you know, you're, yes. you're going to be behind the eight ball for a little while. Where, yes. Like, oh, wow, I, sh I shouldn't have placed there because, and it those things go away. It's like, mm -hmm. the, the analogy, I guess, would be like Settlers of Catan. You know, if you play and you just kind of throw your starting settlements out somewhere, you're like, let's see what happens. That's the wrong way right. to play. You get better at this game. You very obviously do get better and you'll start to be able to achieve some things that seemed unachievable that first or second time you played. And I do like that. Um, having said that, I do find, unfortunately, that the look of the game matches for me 
the the emotions and the arc of the game. And by that, and what I mean by that is they're both kind of muted. The game's look and vibe is very muted, very sort of, hmm, yes, a board game. And the feel, unfortunately, emotionally, also comes across that way to me. I don't have high highs and low lows in this game. It's It hums along. This is the best word I can think of for this game is that it is workmanlike. This is hmm. a trusty workmanlike game. It'll get it'll get to the table, you will play a game, you will wrap up that game effectively and efficiently, and you will score. Are you gonna have fun? That's possible. That's possible. But that's not what we're about. We're about working well. It's like, okay. And so I'm I miss some pizzazz in the game. I didn't find it to be very uh there's no flash. There's no and in that again, in that way it reminds me of some of these older games. It's like this functions. Look at these mechanisms. But no one's going, look at that crazy turn I had. You know what I mean? It's it's rare. Those are fleeting moments, is I guess what I'm saying. I This is where you and I disagree a bit, yeah. I think. I think that each deck having one special power card, when yes. you draw that, you read what your one special ability is, and it's some asymmetry in the game. Absolutely. The, the layout of the board, the bonuses on the tracks, all that's a little bit asymmetric, and it kind of feeds into the one power card you have. Mm-hmm. And played correctly, that power card is tremendous. Yes. And sometimes you want to play it earlier, and sometimes you want it to maybe be the last move of the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially the... <laughs> I remember the first time we played this game, we, we went into it the wrong mindset. We thought this was kind of a race. Race right. across the board, because that seemed logical. And my player power was, when I play this card... You just kind of awkwardly moonwalk all the way back to the starting position, as far back as you want, and you collect every single bonus on the way. And I said, oh, I guess this isn't a race. <laughs> it really is a resource collection management thing. Yeah, yeah. And I got, I got a ton of bonuses doing that. If I play it too late, it'll be too late to take advantage of them all. So I do I do it two or three turns from the end. Right. I think that does help spark more life and more interest into the game for me. And, earnestly, some humor into it. Sure, yeah. And if you have that special ability, you know you're not going for one of the cairns, right? I mean, like, you could, but then you have no special ability. Right. You know, so you're leaving between 15 and whatever, 10 points on the table... But you'll reap the rewards of a bunch of bonuses. And I like that. I like the individuality of the player boards. The the characters, the... I say characters. The sort of your, your symbol, your cave drawing. And then deck composition and that one special ability. It's actually two special abilities you sort of graduate to to the other one. Um, yeah, and that's, you're right. I mean, I think this is a game that a lot of people are really going to like. If you like and... Don't if you like this sort of old school feel and don't need the the flash. I guess for me, man, the graphic design in this is a kick in the teeth. It's just like ah, I, this. This is interesting. I can't wait for the game to come out because this is a good prototype. That's how I feel looking at all this stuff. Um, maybe fifteen years ago, I would have loved it. As it is right now, I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and give you my final thoughts here. I'm coming down at a 7 on this one. I enjoy it. It's one I recommend for a specific crowd. You know what I mean? If you, if none of the things I'm complaining about are things that you're going, yeah, yeah, you're like, oh, whatever. I mean, like, yes, the graphic design feels old school. It's a small publisher. Get off, you know, get off of it. Then don't worry about it. I think you're going to enjoy the gameplay here. I wanted a little more... Pizzazz, a little more excitement maybe along the way, but I'm still recommending it. I'm still giving it a 7. I'm giving this a little bit more comfortable recommendation. I'm giving it an 8. Yeah. I like this one a lot, and when you think of it as this I don't know, fairly unique experience that you're going to get from a new game, Yeah. I appreciate that. I like that you don't have a lot of hand-holding. The first card you play in, that, in this game is going to be about 9 times as weak as the last cards that you play. Right, right. It has a tremendous uh, growth arc in it. Mm-hmm. In a game that still, yes, does feel kind of flat. It doesn't have those boisterous moments of excitement, but when you compare those last few turns and what you can accomplish to your first few, that's great. Yeah. Uh, but 
at the same time, those first few turns can be kind of uh, a little bit rote and a little bit boring, right? I think right. that's that that and the art slash graphic design are the biggest detractors for me from going higher. I mean, you look yeah. at this cover, it's this is a great cover. The cover is very nice. There's little, very little of this artwork in the game. Each each of the groups has one image that they repeat, right? Pretty much. And maybe the two leaders have artwork. Um, and they printed about this big on your board. Yeah. There's definitely some moments where they could have made the game feel a little more alive. Yeah, I agree. So there you go. Still, we're recommending on a 7 and an 8. That is a seal of approval, everybody. Foot Footprints here. So thank you very much for watching. My name is Z Garcia. And I'm Chris Yee. Enjoy your sweet, sweet tunes that Chris is about to sing to you now. When I looked back and I only saw one set of footprints in the dirt. What did you think? That's when I carried the theme in my mind.